Welcome to the MSJC Internet Authoring Videocast. In session 8.2, you'll be learning about creating storyboards, which shows the pages that you plan to include in your website and the relationship between those pages. How to select appropriate website creation and management tools. How to choose specialized tools. How to identify websites' technical requirements. How to secure a domain name. How to publish a website and how to promote a website. A storyboard can help identify the general content for each page, the number of pages in the site, and the relationship between the site's pages. Think about the plan for the content to include in the website, including text, images, hyperlinks, multimedia, meaning audio or video, and any forms that will be used for collecting data. Many web developers rely on website management tools rather than using Notepad and HTML. Adobe's Dreamweaver is a website creation and management tool that reduces the need for the developer to understand the syntax of all the tags and the attributes that are used to create web pages. It uses a graphical user interface to generate the HTML documents for web pages, often using menu selections, drag and drop, or other simplified methods for adding content to a web page. It also includes tools that you can use to format text, create hyperlinks, add multimedia, and perform other tasks that are supported by HTML and XHTML. These tools are all fine and dandy, but the reality is, when you run into problems with these tools, you'll still need to really understand how HTML works to be able to fix the errors that were created by these tools. Another option is to use one of the many web-based site creation platforms that let you select templates to provide structure and overall design for the site that you can populate with your own content. Some examples would include Weebly, Squarespace, and Snap Pages. These sites provide you with a way to develop a professionally designed website quickly and without needing to learn how to use a sophisticated program such as Dreamweaver. They also can be very limited in their capabilities, and many of them have quite a learning curve. Some web pages include content that is beyond the capabilities of HTML, such as dynamic content. Dynamic content is content that changes when you view the page such as an image that represents the number of times that a page has been viewed, an animated graphic, or an interactive product display. JavaScript is a scripting language that is executed by a web browser. You'll learn more in depth about JavaScript in the Web Development Level 2 class. To process a script in the web browser, it uses a scripting engine. The scripting engine translates the code that's in the script into a format that the browser can execute. The most common use of JavaScript is to perform tasks that are not possible in the static world of HTML. Many websites include resources for downloading and using free scripts written in JavaScript, one of which is JavaScript.com, which includes a tutorial that lets you code a program from within the website to demonstrate some of the programming syntax and some simple commands that display text and open dialog boxes. What can you do with JavaScript without having to learn how to write your own scripts? You can use a script to display a greeting based on the time of the day, the day of the week, or a special occasion. You can display a static calendar or an interactive calendar that lets the user pick a date. You can also display the current date and time or a countdown until the specific day and time, such as a holiday or a grand opening. You can also use JavaScript to display scrolling text or a drop-down menu of selections or animate buttons that change color or display a message when the user points to or clicks them. A script might also detect the user's browser version or open up a pop-up window with a message. JavaScript adds other functionality to a web page as well such as simple or scientific calculators. Most of the scripts for performing these tasks are available for free from the developers who created them. 
When you use a script to add functionality to a web page, you can provide content in your web page that is beyond the basic capabilities of HTML. You also provide your page users with tools that enhance their interaction with your website. A lot goes into building web pages and websites. Depends on the environment that you'll be working in as to whether you'll be focused in one area of the web development or not. But if you're in the position where you're wearing all hats, you'll need to look at other development tools as well, including choosing an image editing and illustration program. So computer-generated graphics come in two basic formats, raster, also called bitmap, or vector. Raster graphics are composed of pixels and they use file name extensions like .bmp, .gif, .jpg, .png, and .tif. The .gif or gif, the .jpg or jpg, and the .ping, png, are the three most commonly used formats in web development. Vector graphics are composed of paths and they use file names like .ai if you're using Adobe Illustrator or .wmf, .cdr if you're using Corel Draw, and .dxf. Scalable vector graphics or SVG files are the most used vector format in web development. And programs like Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw can export the files that you create in those programs to the scalable vector graphic format. Raster graphics are not scalable and the content cannot be layered. If you use a scanner to scan your images, that creates raster graphics. Vector graphics, on the other hand, are scalable, their content can be layered, and they're best suited for drawn objects. So continuing now with our selection of editing and illustration programs, raster graphics require the use of image editing programs, such as Adobe Photoshop, which lets you resize, crop, and retouch photos. Image editing programs usually include a basic tool palette that lets you perform tasks common to creating and editing images. Vector graphics require the use of illustration software, Illustration software usually requires more thorough understanding, which can be gained from taking a class. So now we take a look at choosing a web hosting provider. And it's important that you understand your website's technical requirements when choosing a web hosting provider. When selecting a web hosting provider, consider not only cost, but also the types of web servers that the web hosting provider uses. Is it Linux, Apple? Windows or other? The software used to run the servers? The services that are being offered by the web hosting provider? Be sure that the web hosting provider can meet all technical requirements of your website. Do they support ASP.NET? Do they support Node.js? Do they provide MySQL or SQL Server database access? There's quite a plethora of options when it comes to choosing your web hosting provider. This screen offers 30 different options, and although the list is comprehensive, it's by no means a complete list. You can do a Google search on each of these hosting providers and go to their websites and start getting a feel for the different options and features that each will offer you. When it comes to choosing your web hosting provider, you need to understand the various types of web servers that will be available to you. Not only their operating systems, but how secure they are. Do they support the encryption of data? Do they offer a dedicated server, which is a web server that hosts only one website? Or are they offering shared servers, which host several sites on a single server? Which means you're sharing the bandwidth and the CPU usage and the storage which means you'll need to understand your site's file size and your transfer requirements. The amount of data that's transferred from the web server is known as the site's bandwidth or data transfer. Most companies sell server space based on a file size limit and a daily or monthly data transfer limit. Make sure that the web hosting provider can handle current needs as well as anticipated needs. 
Evaluate other services that are offered by other web hosting providers. Other useful services offered by web hosting providers include site statistics, email accounts, website templates, website creation and management tools, database software, domain name management services, and technical support. A traffic report gives detailed information such as how many visitors used the site each day, how many pages the visitor viewed, which pages visitors used to enter and exit the website, which search strings were entered into the website search feature, and so on. Analyzing a site helps you understand who is using the site and what information visitors are seeking. One recommendation would be using analytics at google.com. You can register your site there, and once you've done that, Google will give you a little bit of code that you put into your web page, which helps them collect the analytics on your website. And you must register a domain name for your website. Some web hosting providers include domain name registration and renewal as part of their service. Once you begin creating content for your website, then you'll need to be able to publish that content up to your web hosting provider. The web hosting provider will provide the information needed to upload the website files. And when uploading, be sure that you upload all supporting files including images, linked files, and multimedia files. Be sure that you maintain folder structure that's needed for relative paths included in your HTML code. And confirm absolute paths used in hyperlinks for supporting files to make sure that those files are available to your site visitors. Remember, absolute paths that work with files on your hard drive may not work once the files are uploaded to the web hosting provider. When publishing a website, your web hosting provider may offer you with a control panel, which is a web page, that will include all the tools that you need to access and manage your website. A local website would be a copy of the website that's stored on a hard or a local drive, maybe on your computer or one of the company's servers. And the website stored on the web server is called the remote website. The last major task in publishing a website is promotion. You can be proactive and use meta tags in your web pages to teach search engines how to list your site. Meta tags contain a summary of the content that a search engine might include in its search results and are used by search engines to index the web page. Search engine submissions is the process of submitting your site's URL to one or more search engines so that they will list your site in their indexes. And search engine optimization is the process of fine-tuning your site so that it ranks well in a search engine's results when a user searches the web page for your site's keywords. That concludes this lecture. Until next time, happy coding. If you like this video, please click the like button and leave us a comment down below. I also would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos are posted.